Hey everyone, it's Jack from Cultaholic.com back again with another news update. First of all, we have some news about the plans for the rumoured tag team Money in the Bank ladder match and reasons why it may not actually be happening after all. We also have some news about the roughly 20 new independent wrestlers who signed UK contracts with WWE and we also take a wider look at what that means for certain UK independent promotions, particularly those with streaming services who may be unable to use certain talent now. Uh, very interesting stuff there to delve into and also the reasons behind WWE's sudden recruitment drive in the UK. Why have they done this? It's all it's all going to make sense. But um, let's just dive straight into it and take a look at all of the news. First of all, according to the Wrestling Observer newsletter, the Money in the Bank tag team ladder match briefcase event extravaganza has reportedly been scrapped by WWE. You may remember that last week on Raw and SmackDown, we had tag team wrestlers cutting promos about what it would mean to win the Money in the Bank briefcase. And I remember thinking, well, Tyler Breeze probably isn't going to be in the, the singles men's ladder match. He, he, if he was, he'd be in a tag team match. Obviously, a lot of other people saw this and noticed it. And that led to rumours of a third Money in the Bank briefcase match. We already know there's going to be one for the men and one for the women, both featuring superstars from Raw and SmackDown. But this third tag team one sounded like a pretty interesting, pretty unique proposition. It looks, though, like that has been scrapped, not only because those mysterious you know, phone camera promos have suddenly disappeared from Raw and SmackDown this week, but also because of one particular superstar, or should I say one of three potential superstars who've qualified for the Money in the Bank ladder match, for the men's one, for the singles Money in the Bank ladder match. That superstar is, of course, one of the New Day. One of the members of the New Day has progressed to the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. We don't know who it is at this point. I suspect it'll probably be Kofi Kingston. He seems the best suited to that sort of matchup. But um, this sort of implies that the tag match also isn't going to happen just because if we were going to have a tag team ladder match for a Money in the Bank briefcase, the New Day would certainly be in that match, wouldn't they? At least two of the members would be in that contest. They have experience before in ladder matches. I remember a really good one against, I think the Lucha Dragons were involved as well. I can't exactly remember what it was for, but it was some kind of multi-team ladder match. It was the one where Xavier Woods threw his trombone and hit Kaliso in the back. Um, but yeah, now that one of, the, one of the New Day members has qualified for the briefcase match itself, kind of getting the impression that the tag team match isn't going ahead. In other news, roughly 20 new UK independent wrestlers, well, no longer independent wrestlers, roughly 20 UK wrestlers have signed contracts with WWE. Uh, not all of those names have been revealed or reported, but a few have. A few were announced for the uh, UK Championship Tournament of, of 2018, which was announced yesterday, and a couple appeared on 205 Live yesterday as well. So I have the full list here. Uh, the full list of names reported so far, I should say, because there's not 20 names here, but Joe Coffey, Zach Gibson, Dave Mastiff, El Ligero, they were all obviously named in the first announcement for members of the UK tournament. Uh, Travis Banks, the current Progress champion. Chris Brooks, a big member, you know, a member of CCK, one of the biggest tag teams in the UK independent scene. Ginny, a fantastic heel women's wrestler. Uh, Kenny Williams and Flash Morgan Webster, who did appear on 205 Live, of course. And Eddie Dennis, who's feuding with Mark Andrews, his former tag team partner. And Andrews is, of course, also a semi-regular face on 205 Live. But what's the reason for this? Why have WWE suddenly decided to snap up all these guys once again? They did so, remember, about a year and a half ago when they just sort of hoovered up various talents, including Mustache Mountain, Joseph Connors, those sort of guys, and made that UK tournament around them. They're doing it again this year. And, and why is that? Well, a lot of people are theorizing that it's because of a little channel a huge channel in the UK, a huge television channel called ITV. Now, ITV announced in 2016 that they were bringing back World of Sport, the old UK 80s and previous to the 80s as well. The big wrestling television programme of yesteryear, which featured guys like Mick McManus, Big Daddy Giant Haystacks, real household names that your parents would probably know if, if they're from the UK, um, or your grandparents, depending on your age. Um, but I guess the, the fact that they announced that this was coming back on New Year's Eve 2016 prompted WWE into action. They were like, oh no, if this comes back and is a success, then that's suddenly a huge new promotion with a primetime TV slot on ITV and, and we're in trouble in the UK. So they kind of made the UK tournament, got a few of the biggest guys, signed them to exclusive contracts or semi-exclusive contracts, which meant they couldn't work for ITV. And it kind of all worked out for WWE. The ITV uh, sort of world of sport revival show was fairly well received, but it didn't set anything alight. 
and um, yeah, everyone kind of just forgot about it and it died away. Now ITV have mentioned that they're bringing back World of Sport. Tapings have already, you know, they've already happened. We don't know what's happened on the tapings. They've been very secretive about the whole thing, but various big UK wrestlers have appeared on those shows. Um, it also, rumor has it, it, it's also a much better look. It looks much more like a wrestling show. It's much more polished. It's not the ITV kind of game show feel, the kind of overly kid-friendly feel that we saw on New Year's Eve 2016. Now, the fact that this is happening is again a major threat to WWE, and that may be why they've announced this second UK Championship tournament and signed quite a few of the biggest names once again. It all kind of makes sense if you think about it. And I personally, you know what, it may just be a coincidence, but I think the story really does have quite a bit of credence to it. And finally, what does this mean for certain promotions in the UK? Well, it has been widely reported by various wrestling sites, and also we've kind of just heard it through the grapevine here at Coldaholic.com. Thanks to our connections in the UK independent scene, that's correct. No, but seriously, we, we've heard it from various sources that um, now the terms of the new contracts that the WWE UK guys have signed means that various promotions with a streaming service, I'm talking about Rev Pro, obviously Defiant Wrestling as well, are now unable to use certain names. So this is particularly damaging for Rev Pro and for Defiant Wrestling. I'm talking about guys like Trent Seven, obviously, was a big figure in Rev Pro. They can't use him anymore. The only promotions that seem to be exempt are Progress and ICW, who we already know are in bed with WWE. Um, I've not seen on anything I've read or heard anything about OTT, the Irish promotion, but I suspect they're also exempt because they seem to be on pretty good terms with WWE. And also they're sort of built around their current champion, Jordan Devlin, who appeared in last year's UK tournament. And as far as I'm aware, still has his UK contract, his WWE UK contract. So. It's all a bit of a murky political situation, which could be damaging for a number of promotions. As well, talking about Defiant, one of their biggest stars over the past two years has obviously been El Ligero, who is now a WWE contracted superstar. So it's all, it's all very difficult for certain promotions, but I guess the challenge for bookers is to work their way around it, bring in new guys, elevate newer guys, you know, bring in some trainees, that sort of thing, and just keep the ball rolling. That's what I do anyway, but obviously, it's much easier said than done. That's all for now. Thank you very much for watching this news video. I've been Jack from Cultaholic.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Jack the Jobber. You can follow all of us at Cultaholic. And you can check out our Patreon as well if you want. Patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And never, ever forget, of course, to join us.